Join me as I take a look at Walmart and see what kind of healthy options that they have. I'm gonna be looking at the products that are specifically labeled as healthy. I'm gonna share with you guys things to avoid and also share with you guys as many replacements as possible. Here's the beef that I have with this beef. So unless otherwise stated, hormones are very prevalent in regular beef and it's only chicken that it was outlawed in. So there is gonna be definitely hormones in this. Um, we already know that even like Europe, they've done extensive studies and showing that you know these hormones can actually, they do have the potential to cause some damage. And so we definitely should be avoiding them. There's even a part of the world, it's another organization of the World Health Organization that also deemed hormones unsafe and sketchy. So I would absolutely look for something that is going to be grass fed, grass finished. Of course, my number one choice is always to choose a local farm. Very easy to do. Just go to the USDA website, check them out. You can actually type in like, you know, co-ops, farms, uh, Google search. And if you're in Texas, you're in luck because there's so many friggin' farms out there. And believe it or not, most of the time you actually pay less when you get their meat there versus trying to get like grass fed, grass finished at a grocery store. But if you really wanna purchase something at a grocery store, if you really wanna get something at Walmart, I'm gonna show you a better option. This is a much healthier option if you must purchase from a grocery store. So at Walmart, they've got market side organic. It says grass fed ground beef. I like the fact that they're telling you that it's grass fed and grass finished, no hormones, but it is gonna be obvious because it's got the stamp of the black label organic instead of the green. So they're a little bit more strict. So if you must, if you're looking for like a good beef option at Walmart, this brand is a really good find. Ladies and gentlemen, the worst salmon you can buy, farmed salmon. It's usually always Atlantic. So here's the thing on this. These fish are in such poor quality. They're fed and they're treated so bad. They end up with lice. So they have to treat them because they're in like crowded areas. And they're so, this salmon is so bad and it's so discolored that they have to add color. But if you look on here, they'll actually tell you that. Color was added through feed in order to maintain some sort of uh, salmon color, if you will. Instead of this crap, just get wild caught, okay? Wild caught is gonna be better. Look at the freaking difference here. This is sockeye. Now sockeye tends to be a richer salmon, but look at the difference of the, look at these. These are two different kinds. This one is without any type of coloring whatsoever. And this is with added color. So choose wild caught. This is definitely a marketing tactic right here. And I just want you guys to be aware of this. This is not to create any fear, but when they say no hormones, well, hormones were outlawed in chicken, not in beef. They're still allowed to add them. It's very prevalent in beef, but they don't add hormones anymore. So for them to say that there's no hormones, well, there never is going to be hormones. So this is organic, yes, it, but it's free range, which means the, chick the chickens were in crowded areas. Usually they de-beak them and they don't treat them humanely. Now, I always wanna provide you guys with another option and I'm really, really passionate about supporting our local farmers. Oftentimes, people don't even realize this, but you can get much better quality meats, chicken, beef, at a cheaper price by going directly to your farm. And if you wanna search for farms, you can actually go on the USDA website, I believe, and there's a section for like farmer's markets and co-ops and uh, you know pickup locations. So there's so many different healthy options out there. That would be, that's absolutely 100% the way that I would go is if you're wanting to really up your game and get healthier options, that's what I would recommend. If you're gonna spend money on eggs, I see a lot of people are buying these and these are gonna be higher priced than the other eggs. Some people think that the color is a determinant for some reason of the health of the egg or how healthy it is, right? But the only difference between the brown shells, the blue shells, and the white shells are the fact that it's the color, it usually corresponds to the color of the chicken's earlobe. So usually these are from brown chickens that have brown earlobes. And so it's, it's not any healthier, right? 
Now this is labeled as organic. Okay, that's great. That means they're on organic feed, but these also are cage free. So basically you're paying a higher dollar for, basically these are raised in a barn and they probably have a little area. Let's see what they say here. Okay. There, it, it actually tells you right here. Hens are raised on a certified organic feed, okay? Free to roam, nest, and perch in a protected barn with outdoor access. So they probably are de-beaked because that's something that they do a lot of to prevent them from fighting. But then you're also paying higher price for, they're all cooped up in a barn in crowded pro, in a you know crowded environment. And then usually outdoor access just means that there's a fenced off area and they're they're not out there like pastured so when you're looking when you're looking for eggs especially if you're going to pay a higher price for eggs you want to look for pastured organic because those are the chickens that are going to be you know living their best life and eating the bugs eating the grass and all that stuff this is something that people think is healthy and because it's marketed as that they tell you that it's 15 grams of protein and then they also tell you that it's basically breadless. You've got your spinach, egg, bacon, caramelized onion, Parmesan, turkey sausage, and cheese. And so I want you to think about this when you, in order to put this into perspective, the easiest way to spot if something is ultra processed is if it, if it tells you something on here that should be very simple, but then you look at the ingredient list, take a look at the ingredient list right here. It is ridiculously large. And for something that is just gonna have supposedly bacon, spinach, caramelized onion, and the egg, the you know turkey sausage, it should be very minimal ingredients, but in fact, it's not. So we've got um, a lot of different flavorings in here. You also have all of these uh, nitrites, which we know are linked carcinogens for cancer. You've got citric acid, by the way, which is that is not naturally produced. It's actually produced by mold. And then you've got all of these different type of preservatives in here. They even tell you that things, I believe there's something on here. I saw something that said, here we go, contains bioengineered food ingredients. These are all things that you technically can't get at home to make yourself. And so that's the easiest way to spot it. You know, can you get the ingredients that are listed on here? Can you get them in your grocery store and make them at home? Let me tell you the easiest way. Stop buying this the best way, not only to save money because you're not buying a bunch of crap that's going to make you sick is just to make it, make it, make it yourself. You can easily take some you can take all of these ingredients and you can literally make them yourself and you can make more of them than what's actually in this package right here are you one of those people that got on the cauliflower crust boat the one where cauliflower crust is like definitely superior well that's what this company right here wants you to think they focus on cauliflower crust pizzas and this type of thing is marketed as healthy they tell you it's an excellent source of protein it's 350 calories gluten-free, here's the issue that I have with this. And I want you to, to think about how, like what ingredients would you, would you need to get in order to make a cauliflower crust? Well, you would probably maybe get some almond flour or some sort of like, some sort of something, right? Nothing grains, because you're trying to avoid that. You would definitely get cauliflower. So when you look on the back, you should expect to see very simple ingredients of things that you personally can get at home. But unfortunately, when you look at the ingredient list, there's many things on here that scream ultra processed. And this is the type of thing that I really want you guys to look out for. This little thing right here, honestly, is so easy to make with your own cauliflower. And it's ridiculous to even buy something like this. I mean, you've got really bad oils. So they're using canola oil, sunflower oil. They've got, um, cornstarch in here. They have zinc and gum. They have preservatives in here. And then just ingredients that should not be in the type of stuff that you should be eating. Now this, the thing is, is that this is not like, this is not part of the, the part of the problem is that it's not like something like this on occasion, every once in a blue moon. This is the stuff that people are eating on a consistent basis. And we're, we're talking about like consistent type of things. This is not necessarily something that you wanna have all the time. In fact, I would probably even 100% 
omit this and just make your own. Cauliflower crust is really super simple to make and there's so many different resources out there. So I wouldn't even say replace something like this. I would just say make your own because number one, it's gonna be cheaper and number two, it's gonna be much better for your health. One of the things that people complain about is that eating healthy is super expensive, right? This is a great option. Actually, this is the next best thing if you cannot afford to buy fresh blueberries. Frozen blueberries, frozen fruits and vegetables are actually frozen in their prime state. And so they're gonna be the most nutrient dense. They're actually frozen during the most nutrient dense state, which can sometimes even be more nutrient dense than fresh, depending on when you're eating them, especially if you're eating fruits and veggies that aren't exactly prime, like in their prime ripe state. One of the things I will say about this is this is not organic, but again, you know, if that is not something that you're concerned about, this would be a good option. Blueberries have antioxidants in them. And again, this is frozen in the most ripe state. So if you're trying to save money, go to frozen because that's going to be your next best option. This section right here, this usually in the frozen section, this is one of the worst offenders, especially and I hate to say this, but plant-based is often marketed as healthy, but when you're dealing with processed foods, plant-based is a huge offender for ultra-processed foods and really crappy ingredients because they're trying to mimic something in nature which doesn't naturally, like this, this right here, let me use this as an example. People think that this is healthy right here, impossible beef. And I get it, I understand, you don't wanna eat real beef. But the problem with this is that they're putting so much crap in here, they're giving you the cheapest form of protein possible, which is GMO soy, okay? GMO soy. And let's take a look and see here what else we've got. Look at, look at all these ingredients. Natural flavors, which is not natural cultured dextrose, which is something you want to avoid as well. You've got food starch, modified yeast extra extract, then more dextrose, more soy, and then you've got all of these synthetic vitamins that are added in. So these are all to try and mimic what actually is much healthier for you, and that's like grass-fed, grass-finished beef. And I get it, like, you know, if you're a vegan and you're trying to be healthier, the best thing that you can do is to eat legumes and try like organic edamame, things like that. And there's lots of vegetables that have higher protein counts as well. But this is absolutely something that you really, really should be avoiding. Here's a popular brand of honey that you can get at Walmart. I see a lot of people buying this. It's their great value brand. And this can be a little bit deceiving, but I'm gonna give you guys a better option. So. This is just something to look out for. A lot of the times they do throw up the, you know, organic and raw honey, but the fact of the matter is, is that a lot of raw honeys are actually heated. And so during that heated process, even though it's not like boiling, it is destroying some of the nutrients. And what you really wanna look for is you wanna look for raw, unfiltered, organic. And another thing too, and I used to think this, so, Organic honey does actually matter. It's not the flowers that they're talking about. I actually used to raise bees. And so the part of the organic process is the fact that when they need to treat the bees, like, cause sometimes bees can get like mites and things like that. What they do is they treat them organically, like with essential oils and they use all natural methods versus using something unnatural to treat them. So when you look for honey, you're gonna, like I said, you're gonna be looking, I prefer, preferably a glass bottle. And I also look for something that's in the state that I'm in because that's gonna give you like the most benefits. And that's gonna also be beneficial if you have allergies. So for instance, let's see if we can find a Texas honey. And I think there was actually a couple here, but let's see. Okay, here's one right here. Actually, there's a couple. Now, the only thing I will say is these are, I would like to see them in glass, but this is gonna be a better option. So you're gonna look at raw and unfiltered, and they're from Texas. So these are gonna be a better option. Let's talk about peanut butter because I feel like sometimes looks can be deceiving. This is a very popular brand, I get it. This has been around for years, but the problem is if you look at it closely, you see how it doesn't actually say peanut butter on there? But if you turn it around in small print, it says peanut butter spread. 
So that means that it's not peanut butter. It's actually the first, in fact, you've got peanuts, yes, but then the second ingredient is corn syrup solids, sugar, pea protein, fully hydrogenated vegetable oils, which are really bad oils, like you've got soybean in here, you've got preservatives in here. This is definitely not something that you want to be consuming. If you're looking at a healthier option, I've actually got two options for you. Now, while I would have liked to have this in glass, this is definitely a budget-friendly option. This is going to be where you can see the oil separating. That's how usually how you can tell if in fact this is peanut butter, but there shouldn't be any added oils. This, this oil right here just should be coming from the peanuts. Anything else you might see in here could be like seeds or even sea salt or something along those lines. Now that does bear organic, but that doesn't always necessarily mean it's healthy. So we're gonna turn around and see. So in fact, it is just organic dry roasted peanuts and sea salt. So this is a great budget friendly option to get instead but I have another option for you if you're looking at kind of getting something in glass that's also a bit of a healthier option. So here's another option. This is Black Label Organic. Black Label is gonna be more strict than your Green Label. So anytime you see that, it usually implies also that there are probably very limited ingredients. It's usually like the single source type of things that you see with the Black Label. That's usually very common. So this one is glass, like I said, and it does contain just organic peanuts and then salt. So this is a good option. This is a little bit, this can be a little bit more expensive than the great value one, but it's a really good choice. A lot of people love this stuff. I've seen so many things on social media showing pouring this stuff all over the food. But the problem with this, even though it is marketed as healthy, it's got sugar free, no artificial preservatives, no high fructose corn syrup. But the problem lies with the rest of the stuff. So they're using zinc and gum, which is an irritant to the gut. And they're also, that's basically just, uh, it's gonna thicken it up, but why do you need to do that? There's caramel color, so there's coloring, there's natural flavors, which are not natural flavors. And then you've got modified cornstarch, which is highly, highly, highly ultra processed. And then you've got the worst offender of all, which is sucralose. So I know a lot of people consume products with sucralose, but here's the deal. It actually is a known irritant to the gut and it also disrupts gut microbiota. And the problem in America here is, is not the fact that we're consuming a little bit of this every once in a while. The fact that is it like this type of product, a lot of the stuff that's in this is in a lot of the stuff. And so the stuff, like when you add everything up, it really does take a toll on us. So instead you can choose something a little bit more natural. In fact, you can literally take like some sweet peppers, you can blend it with some soy sauce, you can put in some uh, sesame seeds. I mean, there's garlic, onion. I mean, there's so many different easy, there's a lot of different ways to make your own, but if you must buy something, I'm gonna show you a better option here at Walmart. Even though I always recommend making your own stuff, this is gonna have added sugar in it, but this is non-GMO and they use all natural ingredients. So I would, if you must use something like this, use it sparingly because like I said, it still has sugar in it, but at least it doesn't have all of the crap and all of like the gut irritants and also stuff that destroys gut bacteria. So again, first choice would be to make your own, but then again, this would be a much better option. I am very happy to see this here. So this is a great option, an alternative to your normal Hellman's mayo that's like full of crap. This actually has very clean ingredients. It is non-GMO, they use avocados, but take a look at the clean ingredients right here. They've got avocado oil, filtered water, egg yolks, whole eggs, distilled white vinegar, mustard, and then all the stuff that goes in the mustard, of course, the salt rosemary extract. So really good clean ingredients and you can get it right here at Walmart. Somebody wanted to know about pasta. So I always say, if you can make your own first, uh, I love making my own pasta because you can grind your own flour or your, make your own flour by grinding wheat berries. But if you must buy pasta, try to source something that has like single ingredients. A lot of things that are like marketed as like protein pasta, they usually add synthetic vitamins and they're really not 
any better for you. Look for something, like I said, with single ingredients. And then this one too, non-GMO. I love that they're both non-GMO. So this would be my suggestion if you're actually looking at buying a healthier type of pasta. I see a lot of people choosing this olive oil right here, and I'm gonna tell you why you need to avoid this, but I'm gonna show you what to get instead. So there's a reason why this brand is so cheap. This, that should be a red flag right there, but if you turn it around on the back, and this is why it's so important to look at the ingredients. This is actually two types of oils. The first ingredient, which is always gonna be what it's mostly of, refined olive oil. So this is highly processed olive oil, and then they add in a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. So this is not going to be like that high polyphenol, that chemical compound of like beneficial stuff that's in olive oil. You're not going to get that in this. This is basically refined oil. It's processed oil. So I would avoid that and look for something that is one single ingredient, just olive oil. You want to see non-GMO, which would be good. I tend to look for things that are like from Italy or even Spain. Those olives, those are usually full of like high polyphenols, which is that beneficial component. But just something to keep in mind, not every olive oil is going to be the same year round. So while this brand might be okay and might be high polyphenol one year, it could possibly change depending on the region, depending upon you know how you grow it. And another thing to look out for too is, you know, is it coming from a reputable company? Is it coming from a company that certifies their olive oil? That's also something you want to look at as well. Here's another trick too. So this one says extra virgin olive oil. And when you turn around the back, it does say extra virgin olive oil as a single ingredient, but take a look at all of the different places. You literally have no way to track where it's coming from. All right, so look for something that is first cold pressed. And I love the fact that this is black label organic, which we talked about earlier. That is, they're, they're a little bit more strict but this is gonna be a much better option. Now, even though this is, I believe it's like they have distributed by Dallas, this is actually a product of Italy, which I like, but you wanna look for something that's just like single source. Now, if you can find a really good olive oil, the higher quality olive oil, the higher the smoke point. And a lot of people don't realize that because the media has told us that you can't cook with olive oil, but what, are, what have the Italians and the Greeks been doing for years? They've been cooking with olive oil and they're, they've got, that's where all the centenarians are. They're, those centenarians in you know, Greece and in Italy, they're using, they've been cooking with olive oil for centuries and they're, they're living longer than Americans. So look for a high quality olive oil. Don't buy the great value mixed olive oil, the refined olive oil. Choose something that's single source instead. Somebody asked about chomps. And so I take requests. So if you guys wanna see something and wanna know if it's healthy or not, just put it in the comments and I'll look for it next time. So chomps is in fact a, supposedly a cleaner option, right? As, as far as in like, I would certainly say it's better than frickin' Slim Jim, which is full of uh, nitrites. They, they're using full-on nitrites. I mean, they're not even like trying to be healthy about this. There's a lot of different uh, flavorings. They use soy in here. Why would they use soy in a product that, has, that, is, that is beef, pork, and chicken? I have no friggin' idea, but that's what they do. They use a lot of fillers. This is the problem is not that people are consuming these on a little basis. People are using these like everyday snacks. So this is a cleaner option, but I do want you guys to be just aware that this right here by capsulated lactic acid, which is highly processed while they're using grass fed, grass finished beef. I do like to see that. And there's no nitrites per se, but there's actually a natural form of nitrite in here. And so it's very commonly used, it's called celery powder. And that's usually very processed as well. Um, so if you look on here, it says no nitrites and nitrites added, but it, in tiny little print right here, for you, I don't even think the camera's gonna be able to pick that up, but it basically tells you that there are naturally occurring nitrites from the celery powder. So honestly, like with something like this, I feel like there's really a lot of just much better options to get protein in and to snack. 
So I would say that something like this on occasion, you know, but I wouldn't probably choose this on like a, for like an everyday snack, but this is a healthy, much healthier option than Slim Jims. I like the fact that they have this brand right here and they do also list that they graze on a pasture. This is certainly a much better option than, I don't, I, I honestly, for the life of me, I can't even understand why some of these products are still available. Like, I can't believe it's not butter. It's just, I can't believe it's a bunch of crap. The ingredients on this, does anybody even buy this anymore? It's just really bad. I mean, you've got a lot of processed crap in here. You've got zinc and gum, you've got soybean oil. They're giving you water and soybean oil as their main source. And then they're giving you a lot of just ultra processed crap in here. This is something I would clearly stay away from. Don't even waste your money. I don't want to crush any dreams here, but somebody asked me specifically to take a look at this because this was their favorite. And I'm really sorry, okay? Don't get mad, but this is so bad for you. This is so bad for you. And I promised you guys I would tell you guys a replacement, but this is so unique. It's strawberry flavor, protein pastry, but it actually has one of the most concerning sugar alcohols in here. So in 2023, the link came out that erythritol or erythritol, however you want to pronounce it, actually has increased risk for blood clots. If that's not concerning enough, you've got yellow dye number five, blue dye number one, uh, yellow dye number six, gum, you've got uh, more guar gum, you've got xanthan gum. These are thickeners, citric, citric acid, which is made from, it's highly processed and it's made from mold. Um, you've got palm oil, you've got, you've got safflower oil, all of these different crappy ingredients. And unfortunately, it's, oh, it's got sucralose in it too. And sucralose has also been linked to disturbance in the gut microbiota. And that is part of the problem in the US today. The reason why everybody's on all these freaking diets is because we have damaged the gut microbiome so much from all of this type of foods over the years that we now have to work on healing. And so there are certain diets that people have to be on because our gut is so stressed out. So instead of something like this, like stay tuned, just stay tuned guys, because I did promise a an alternative, I'm gonna come up with a healthy recipe for this type of Pop-Tart. Two good options for protein that I see. And of course, I haven't looked at every single thing on here, but I do like these two right here because they're single source and they're grass-fed collagen. There's, no, there's nothing else added in here and they're unflavored, which is always going to be a lot better because most flavored things are chemically flavored. Like just to give you an example, just because one variety is clean doesn't mean that the other version of it is better. So just to give you an example, the chocolate one, the chocolate doesn't just have cocoa in it. It actually has natural flavors, which are chemically derived. So if you're looking at like being super, super clean, use this and then just like add your own freaking cocoa powder. Another don't be mad at me type of thing, but somebody asked specifically about these, and I know that these are a favorite among people, but I'm telling you right now, these are ultra processed. You can literally make your own type of like energy balls. I have a friend that does that. It's super easy to do. Quality ingredients versus something like this. I feel like these are also pricey. Like why would anybody wanna pay the amount for four little freaking bars when you could literally make something at home much more nutrient dense. Get yourself some freaking cocoa powder, get yourself some whole rolled oats. Uh, you could even get some peanut butter and a little bit of honey. And I mean, there's literally so many options out there. There really are just some unnecessary ingredients. Soy is used commonly because it's a super cheap ingredient. Soy lecithin is in here. This is actually a processed emulsifier. This is something that is supposed to improve the texture of foods, but it's really unnecessary. You've got natural flavors too. The word natural doesn't necessarily mean it's natural. It basically just means that it started out as natural and then they used chemicals to actually process and create that flavor, which is why they can't list it as like, you know, vanilla extract or, you know, cocoa or anything like that. You also have glycerin. This is a processed sugar alcohol. This is not good as well but it's used to retain moisture in products. 
You've got cultured dextrose, which I really hate to see. This is a processed ingredient made from fermenting dextrose, which is a simple sugar. This is often used as a preservative. So something like this, honestly, I would just avoid this and just make your own. And for free health, fitness, wellness, and also free recipes every single week, make sure you subscribe to my newsletter. You can either click the link in the description of this video, or if you're on Instagram, you can click the link in my bio.